good, 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 good. Good evening, welcome to Have I Got News For You. Are you I'm... not going to let that go? Oh, are you? OK, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I do apologise about that intro. It's woken everyone up, hasn't it? <laughs> Michael Grove levelling up. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, welcome to Have I Got News For You. I'm Stephen Mangan. In the news this week, in Essex, 33-year-old Barry Gibbons's claim that he is the second incarnation of Jesus are swiftly undermined. Look at the state of my feet. I've got to try and get over there. <laughs> After the success of same-sex couples on Strictly, producers take the representation of minority groups a stage further. After completing his 363rd tournament, Roger Federer finally decides it's time to quit. <laughs> <laughs> On Ian's team tonight is a comedian who has a PhD in virology. Like that's ever going to come in handy. Please welcome <laughs> Ria Lina. On Paul's team tonight is a comedian who famously loves nothing more than going for a ride on his motorbike, though more recently he's just been pushing it to and from several local petrol stations. <laughs> Please welcome Ross Noble. <laughs> we begin with the bigger news stories of the week. Ian and Rhea, have a look at this. <clears throat> oh, Boris and Pretty being nice to some immigrants. No, it's the high-vis economy. <laughs> Boris showing why bike. Boris bikes were renamed Santander. Yeah. <laughs> He's off looking for a job. <laughs> yeah, the Tory party conference. It's kind of like what the Hunger Games would look like if they staged them in Manchester. <laughs> it's just, just a bunch of elite people thinking everything's all right while the rest of the country burns. Um, <laughs> or not, because there's no fuel, but... <laughs> I think you're big unfair to Boris, and that's the one thing we're not going to be on this programme, because... <laughs> We've got a new culture secretary, Nadine Doris, and she's looking out for any hint of bias. So, you won't find any here. <laughs> the Prime Minister gave an incredibly exciting speech. <laughs> can, can, in which sorry, he's, sorry, he, can I just check? So, the new culture secretary is most famous for eating kangaroo penis. <laughs> no, no, that's unfair. She ate an ostrich anus. Uh, we we followed it. Was that, at, she, was that uh, at the conference or when she was on arms? <laughs> oh, no, no, to be, honest, to be fair, it was harder than it sounds because the ostrich was doing about 34 miles an hour at the time. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, she's, she ate the anus and now she's talking out of it. <laughs> <laughs> but no hint of bias here. <laughs> in his speech, he quite rightly said the country's in a mess. Um, the last 10 years have been, been a disaster. Who was in charge? <laughs> <laughs> and it was the Tory party. Um, which, again, you're stunned, aren't you? Because he didn't know that either. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, despite a resurgence, and no matter how hard it tried, Covid couldn't bring down the Conservative Party conference for a second year in a row. How many hilarious variations did Boris manage on the slogan, Build Back Better? Seven. Something around that. Let's have a look. Build Back Bitter. Mmm. Mmm. Build back batter. <laughs> Build back burger. Build back butter. <laughs> Build back beaver, I say. I mean, what's he think he's doing? I mean... <laughs> Build back butter actually doesn't mean anything. I might be the first one, but do you think he should be sectioned? <laughs> <laughs> Under the Mental Health Act. Yeah. By his build back butler. Build back yeah. <laughs> yeah. Build back beaver, which, you know, I'm like, you've had enough beaver, Boris. Uh... <laughs> Is it do you find like every time he says you just build back better, build back better, but you just keep saying build back better. And that to me sounds like one of the the lesser known hobbits, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it was like Bilbo Baggins, and then he's made Build Back Better. 
Build back better, come with me. I mean, you could play him, Ross. If yeah, I'd, I'd, be, I'd be happy to. <laughs> Uh, we've had White Van Man, we've had Worcester Woman, we've had Greg's Guy. What's... You speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, listen. Yeah. <laughs> no, no wonder you've grown a beard. Uh, listen. For anonymity. Lockdown affected us all in different ways. <laughs> uh, Miss Truss, the new Foreign Secretary, yes. who's she trying to appeal to? Mr Truss. <laughs> <laughs> There's a new target for the Tories. Who are they trying to reach? Oh, uh, the, the little Tory. Little Tories, yeah. <laughs> My favourite little Tory is Rishi Sunak. He's so cool. <laughs> yeah. I love the way Rishi Sunak appeared at the conference. He's been watching the Americans. He came on and he was going. <laughs> <laughs> Who's he pointing to? <laughs> I thought he was showing off an invisible budgie. <laughs> 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 As Foreign Secretary, Liz Truss will find it easier to do what? Sell cheese. Oh, cheese wow. and pork, that's right, yeah. Build back look. bacon. Come on. <laughs> Let's have a look at Liz and her pork obsession. Yeah. In December, I'll be in Beijing, opening up new pork markets. <laughs> <laughs> While we're here, we might as well revisit this classic. We import two-thirds of our cheese. <laughs> that is a disgrace. <laughs> I mean... I... <laughs> She's tipped to be the next leader after <laughs> Boris. She'll get a lot of votes in Cheddar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or, or any cathedral city. <laughs> <laughs> Why might Michael Gove uh, be suddenly sweating? He's been showing off his dance moves. He has, he? yes, he has been showing off his dance moves, yeah. He's young, free, single, out on the town, doing them Tory moves. Quite you right, know, too. Shake off the poor, shake off the poor. <laughs> move through the press corps, move through the press corps. One referendum, lying through my teeth. One referendum, lying through my teeth. Just the classic. How's Keir Starmer been connecting with the electorate? Polls aren't good. Let's have a look at Keir connecting with the electorate. Pleased to meet you. Um, I don't even recall ever seeing you before, so you're not, you're not out there, are you? At the minute, anyway, well, I wouldn't know who you were. OK, thank you. Well, we can fix no that. No disrespect or anything. It's very nice to see you. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I mean, to be fair, there has been, like, a bit of a lockdown and a yes. pandemic. Yeah. I haven't seen you out and about. Good. <laughs> now shut your face and get out. <laughs> That's why I'm not a politician. Yeah. <laughs> what was Matt Hancock up to at the weekend? Did he appear at the conference? I mean, is it any of our business? Oh, he did the marathon. He did. He did the London Marathon. He's, he's obviously done enough running lately. <laughs> so why not put that to good use and raise some money for charity? Yeah, he raised quite a lot of money, I think, yeah. Really? Yeah, he's given it to his mate who runs his local pub. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what were the crowd shouting at Matt to encourage him to finish? <laughs> <laughs> Any ideas? No. No, let's have a look. Matt Hancock, you sugar! <laughs> <laughs> uh, not everyone has been so mean to Matt. Uh, how have his constituents been comforting him since his sacking? What, all of them? <laughs> In individually, surely, by alphabetical order. <laughs> Well, no, they've just been very, very nice to him. Have they? Look. It's been good to see you. You've done very really well. good to see you. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Well, well, you know, we've got, got through it, haven't we? Yeah. Hope, you know, and uh, so now coming good. out the other side. Oh, there we go, fist bump. How are you doing? Not too bad. How's business? Is it okay? I'm all right. Nice to be, nice to be, uh, nice to be out and about. Yeah. You take it for granted. <laughs> that's, a, that's, that's not a very good thing to say to a man who's trapped in a box. <laughs> Nice to be out and about. Look at him. This is Boris Johnson's vision of Britain. High wage, high skill, high productivity, highly unlikely ever to happen. <laughs> Some Conservatives were seen wearing this badge, calling themselves Tory scum. <laughs> Yet again, nicking an idea from Labour. <laughs> 
<laughs> Newly appointed Culture Secretary Nadine Dorries recently warned the BBC has a problem with impartiality. Well, if you're watching Ms Dorries, we hope you appreciate the very balanced way we're covering the news this week. And if you're not watching, who cares? Tory scum. <laughs> During the Tory conference in Manchester, Jacob Rees-Mogg was turned away at midnight from a nightclub, which was bad news for his laudanum dealer who was waiting in the toilets. <laughs> <laughs> Earlier this summer, Dominic Raab lost his job as Foreign Secretary after relaxing on holiday during the Afghan crisis. Raab denied he'd been paddleboarding on holiday in Crete, saying the sea was closed. <laughs> Oh, what a great idea. How do you do that? Asked Pretty Patel. <laughs> Paul and Ross, yes. take a look at this. Oil depot, say what you see. Oil depot. Cars, uh, lorries. Hoover. Petrol station closed. Is this fuel shortages? Yes, correct. Not a lot of it about, is there? No. no. What's it like in Australia, Ross? I mean, apparently there's a global shortage of uh, drivers. It's not, it's not just in Europe, it's not no. just here. Apparently, according to uh, Boris, mm. global shortage. Is there? I've just come from Australia. Yeah. Loads of lorries. Is there? Perhaps <laughs> <laughs> I got lost. Yeah. I flew back through Singapore and I didn't hear a single person say, oh, there's no lorries about. <laughs> <laughs> At one point, I looked out of the plane. Yeah. A lot of lorries. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's almost as if it's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this is the shortage of, among other things, petrol, which is improving throughout the rest of the country, but because it's still bad in London, it's a very important story. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I don't understand. The hospitals are full, the supermarkets are empty, we all work from home. What the hell do people need fuel for? Like, other than to set fire to your hopes and dreams. Like, what... <laughs> what are we using it for? What started, or who started this fuel problem. Keir Starmer. Is Keir Starmer's fault? I'm just applying balance here. Keir Starmer. <laughs> <laughs> it's entirely his fault. Leader of the opposition, fuel crisis, Starmer. Starmer. Yeah, as people are calling him now, Keir, petrol pump Starmer. Yep. <laughs> Can't get my car to start me. Yeah. <laughs> it's his fault. Yeah. Yeah, the global supply chain, it's suffering from what economists call just-in-time syndrome. The just-in-time economy, this is the whole like, concept that the market knows best, right? The market knows best. So we used to have like a massive gas storage unit. We allowed it to close because the market knows best. Now, I don't know a lot about economics, I'm going to be honest, but if you have a supply chain shortage and you don't have any backup and you have to actually waive competition law and your shelves are empty, then maybe the market doesn't know best. Like maybe the market's an idiot and maybe you need to regulate it. Just an idea. <laughs> uh, you want to hear some scary numbers? Yeah, whoa, yeah. 45. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty scary. Uh, there are one and a half billion litres of petrol yeah. in all the cars in the UK if they're full. Yeah. In the nation's petrol pumps if they're full, there's 1.3 billion litres. Oh. That's scary, huh? Yeah. Incredible. At the height of the petrol shortage, some motorists were getting quite desperate. What did a group of them do between Wolverhampton and Northamptonshire last week? Did they go around siphoning it off? Yeah. No, it's actually quite hard to siphon now, because the cars have... Not that I've tried, it sounds like I've tried. <laughs> cars have a ball now that you can't just stick a hose in and... Can't you? ...and then put it into... You can't do that anymore. You've got no, to be think... careful you don't do it to a Tesla. Yeah. Right. Because <laughs> you... <laughs> <laughs> And that kind of physical action needs to be mistaken, can't exactly. it? Exactly, yes. <laughs> Please don't turn that into a gif. <laughs> don't do that. But if Tesla want me to advertise their product... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, a group of drivers, yeah. um, they followed this tanker uh, travelling from Wolverhampton to Overston in Northamptonshire. They followed it for nearly 70 miles. <laughs> because they thought it was full of petrol, until they discovered it was tanker full of Min cement. <laughs> and what did they say to the driver when he stopped at a building site rather than a petrol station? Can we have a lift? We've run out of petrol. <laughs> <laughs> they demanded to know why he hadn't told them he wasn't carrying petrol. <laughs> uh, what's Boris Johnson's big idea for fixing this petrol crisis? We're 100,000 drivers short. So he's bringing in the army, total 70,000 men. 
details. details. Yeah. <laughs> but Ian Duncan Smith's got an HEV licence. The Queen's got one. Has she? Yeah, left over from the war. Ger really? Yeah, any German who has a licence before about 1997 is allowed to drive an HGV, and my father's German, and so they sent letters out to all the Germans that had a licence from before 97 and said, hey, would you like to help us sort out our infrastructure? And my dad said, well, that's what we tried to do in the 40s, but you wouldn't let us. <laughs> Uh, apart from petrol, lorry drivers and common sense, what else are we short of in this country? Is it abattoir workers? Yeah, butchers, yeah. absolutely right. Yeah. yeah. There's not enough uh, meat processing plants to kill all the pigs and chop them up, so the yeah. farmers are having to basically kill them and just get rid of them. You know, I, mean, I don't understand why they just can't have a bit of surplus pigs for a while. Is there somewhere op somebody opening some pork markets up that we could possibly <laughs> exploit <laughs> and send our pigs there? What is behind all these individual crises and making them worse? Is it not Brexit? Yeah, but it's also, it's COVID, isn't it? Isn't that part of the problem? I mean, you're a virologist. Is it all over, COVID, now? Are we safe to go back? <laughs> oh, OK, I can't make this funny. All right, to okay. pause, but I don't know. I, I'm, I'm, ex I'm expecting every virus that didn't have its day last year, other than SARS-2, to come in this winter and just be like, ah! Do you know what I mean? Because we all socially distanced last year, so some, you know, a lot of people got COVID, but nobody got anything else. We didn't have colds, we didn't have flu, we didn't have anything else because we were playing it safe. And this year, we're sort of intermingling and just sort of, you know, Michael Goving it up. And, uh, <laughs> and it, we, we could be getting everything we didn't get last year, but all at once, it could be nasty, because, you but know. that could solve the problem. Well, bring back swine flu. Yeah. The pigs are gone. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. Get yeah. them on the board. Yeah. Yes, this is the supply chaos hitting the economy. To attract more butchers from Europe, ministers are considering relaxing the requirement for them to speak a good level of English. It's now down to two words, pig and hammer. <laughs> <laughs> According to the Times, among the items hit by shipping delays are sofas. Things are so bad, DFS is considering calling off its sale. No! <laughs> <laughs> So, on to the next round. Oh, that looks impressive. We're on to round two, the petrol pump of news. <laughs> wow. uh, yeah. Just as well it isn't live, because you'll have a queue of panellists going all around the building. <laughs> <laughs> uh, buzz in when you know the story. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, dear. Yes, Ria. Is this the uh, release of the Pandora Papers? Yes, it is. It is? OK. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there was you know, there was another core dump of like 11 million uh, papers that just explain what we all already knew, which is that rich people put their money offshore and stay richer, and uh, and Tony Blair. You know, I mean, I mean that was the big one. That's the big one that we focus on. So Russian oligarchs, a whole bunch of Tory donors um, have done dodgy stuff with money. Some people from uh, is it the Middle East? Yeah, the Middle East, Africa, it's, it's oh. most world leaders have Most world leaders have been in it. Most the money they've stolen. And then Shakira and then Tony Blair. Tony Blair, <laughs> Tony Blair didn't uh, pay stamp duty on a property by buying it by an offshore company, saved £312,000. So I think we should just nationalise Tony Blair and that'll keep the universal credit going for a while longer. Mrs Blair said the sellers insisted the property be sold that way and there was nothing illegal about the transaction, just to make that clear. Yes. Uh, but they did. They saved around £300,000 in stamp duty. We also learned something else about Tony Blair this week. What hasn't he done since 1997? Told the truth. <laughs> <laughs> Not done the washing up. That's exactly right, yeah. He's not done a weekly shop, cooked a meal for the family, driven a car or done any laundry since 1997. Oh, he's done a bit of financial laundry. <laughs> <laughs> I can see a slight feeling of ennui at the, these revelations, but they are fairly startling. I mean, it, it does say that the, the Conservative Party is almost entirely funded by Russian oligarchs, most of whom are actually sanctioned. Um, they're not allowed, um, you know, to uh, have any normal relations with normal people, which I know doesn't rule out the Conservative Party, but it, it, <laughs> it, it does make you worry that, you know, our leading political party, which is in government, is entirely funded, almost entirely funded, by foreign nationals who don't have our interests at heart. I mean, I know it's a boring story, but it is sort of mm. touch-worrying. 
But the last two Conservative governments have promised to make offshore dealings more transparent. Um, and Cameron said he would, and May said that they would, and every Conservative government has promised. And the fact that most of their money comes from offshore is obviously not the reason why they don't do anything. <laughs> no bias here, Nadine. <laughs> it is a pretty scandalous thing. It's like allowing Saudi Arabia to buy an English football club. Is, uh, that, is that going through? Yeah, a lot of players for the chop. <laughs> Comedian Mark Nelson tweeted, uh, incredible to think Saudi Arabia are about to invest as much money in Newcastle United as they did into 9 <laughs> <laughs> Philip Green was also mentioned in the papers. Yeah. What did Philip Green do? Oh, he mm. bought his kids' houses, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, quite expensive as well. Quite expensive were. houses. Yes. He went on a spending spree, bought loads of property just as BHS was on the brink of collapse. Yeah. Well, that's fair enough. He felt depressed because all those pensioners weren't going to get any money. Mm. <laughs> so he went out and did a bit of shopping therapy. Yeah. He bought three enormous multi-million pound houses for himself yeah. and his family. Yeah. Good on him. <laughs> <laughs> Who would have thought Philip Green would have turned out to be a bit of a shit? He <laughs> <laughs> was merely building up a store of British homes. <laughs> <laughs> These are the Pandora Papers. On seeing the papers, one Conservative MP remarked, London is the money laundering capital of the world. Yeah, take that, Ramonas, we've still got it. <laughs> <laughs> one ruler shown to have exploited the tax system is the King of Jordan, pictured here. Still not the dodgiest person she's been photographed with. <laughs> These allegations are now 20 years old, so Prince Andrew's losing a bit of interest. <laughs> <laughs> Buzzers on fingers. Buzzers on fingers. <laughs> <laughs> Going in. Yes. Somebody has suggested that James Bond should be played by a woman. Mm. Who suggested that recently, especially? It could, only, it could only be someone like Keir Starmer. It was. Keir Starmer is the right answer, yeah. Keir Starmer can't hold his party together, but he does think the new Bond should be a woman. Uh, quite a fanciful idea, a woman being James Bond. Uh, not quite as far-fetched as a woman being leader of the Labour Party. <laughs> <laughs> What's Keir's reason for asking for a female James Bond? I think he wants James Bond to be a woman because he was very against raising minimum wage up to £15, and if James Bond is a woman, he doesn't have to pay her as much. <laughs> All right. When asked who his favourite Bond was, Starmer remained characteristically on the fence, saying, I don't have a favourite Bond, but I do think it's time for a female Bond. <laughs> Talking of misogyny, who got in trouble uh, this week oh, at the Tory conference? Dominic Raab. Yes, he did. Who didn't understand what oh. misogyny meant. Let's have a look. <laughs> So I think insults and misogyny is, of course, uh, absolutely wrong, whether it's uh, a, a man against a woman uh, or, or a woman against a man. <laughs> I think yeah. you thought misogyny is a hotel resort in Crete. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's, there's your new James Bond character. Ah, misogyny, I've been expecting you. <laughs> <laughs> in more positive news, what has the Magic Circle done recently? They appointed a woman president they and do. the youngest ever as well. She's, like, 28. Megan Swan. She's got a particular style of magic. She does green magic. Oh. Uh, it's all themed around protecting the environment and oh. teaching children about climate change. Book early to avoid disappointment. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> what does she just... She pulls a dead rabbit out of a hat. <laughs> That's not what happened! <laughs> That's not what happened! Wow. Anyone know who the Magic Circle's most famous member is? Yui Geller? Is it Prince Charles? It is indeed. Oh. Well done, yeah. Do you know why he got into the magic circle? Because his mum asked him to make his brother disappear. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, he was inducted into the circle in 1974. He performed a cup and balls trick. <laughs> <laughs> this is the news that Keir Starmer has said he would like to see a female James Bond. The producers of the Bond movies have already said that the next James Bond will not be a woman, but just to annoy Piers Morgan, the person who makes all the gadgets will be called LGBTQ. <laughs> 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 Time now for the missing words round. Can we start with Angela Merkel what before she leaves office? Steals all the stationery? Yeah, <laughs> nicks all the envelopes. Uh, the answer is Angela Merkel 
commemorative teddies sell out before she leaves <laughs> office? Really? Well, we could have been here a long time trying to guess that. I think. <laughs> Can I just check? Are yeah. we talking about the teddy, as in the no. yes. lady? <laughs> the, the snap through. There's no other kind. <laughs> talking about a teddy bear. Let's, oh. Okay. Let's have a look at the teddy bear. <laughs> That's, that is that is worth having for Christmas, isn't, isn't it? It, is. it also inexplicably bleats like a sheep when you turn it over. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the teddy bear's hands are placed together in her famous hand gesture known as the Merkel rhombus. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, when I heard there was a teddy bear doing a German leader's hand gesture, I thought, wow, they finally relaxed a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Next, one in ten Brits want to be remembered with what? A hard on. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, admit it. Put your hand up. <laughs> Put both hands up. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, it'd be a hell of an open casket, wouldn't exactly, it? Exactly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can't get the lid. <laughs> the answer is with a Viking funeral on a burning. <laughs> no. <laughs> New research has shown that half of Brits would like to be remembered in a fun, alternative way after they die. 5% say they want to be cryogenically frozen. Uh, well, if they wait till winter and can't pay their gas bill, they could be in luck. <laughs> Next, farmer who used what has charges against him dropped? Napalm. <laughs> farmer who used sign to insult his village has charges against him dropped. <laughs> Following a local planning row, farmer Carl Powell has stood accused of public order offences after displaying a sign which he accused the village of Peopleton of being a murderous, lawless, godforsaken place, <laughs> probably, most definitely, the nastiest village in Worcestershire. <laughs> Is that... Twinned with Basingstoke. <laughs> I'm getting the impression he's not really a Peopleton person. No. <laughs> so, the final scores. Ian and Rhea have four, Paul and Ross have six. Oh, <laughs> But before we go, there's just time for the caption competition. Oh, it's the hand of God. <laughs> <laughs> Why is the Pope not wearing a mask and the bloke on the left is? He has. It's just slipped back onto the back of his head. <laughs> <laughs> he, he pulls those things there like that and he goes... <laughs> 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 Which note, we say thank you to our panellists Ian Hislop and Ria Lina, Paul Merton and Ross Noble. And I'll leave you with news that Boris Johnson reacts to being told there was an incorrect use of the subjunctive in his conference speech. <laughs> <laughs> From the back of a Range Rover comes the lament that the harness of the child seat won't fasten tightly enough. <laughs> and Prince Andrew laughs off claims that he's avoiding US authorities during an early morning stroll in the grounds of Windsor. <laughs> Good night. Geordie Comer, Billy Porter, live music from Texas and more. We're in for a right treat of a show with Graham here after the news. Next, Greg Davis's fab new comedy continues and tonight the cleaner goes back to his youth and manages to upset an influencer. And now on, on BBC Two, the gripping final part of The North Water.